no matter what you do, what you give them, human beings will long for something more. So there is something within every human being longing to be beyond boundaries. Every other creature always trying to set boundaries because their whole life is about survival. Once you become a human, survival is not the goal of your life. Many like you and me have come and gone, not a trace of them anywhere. But only a few we remember. That one man you're going to remember forever, isn't it so? Hmm? Because he transcended limitations that are supposed to be human. That's what needs to happen to every life. Abraham Maslow is an influential psychologist who proposed the famous hierarchy of needs, a pyramid that shows the relative importance of the needs of every individual in their life. Self-actualization used to be at the top level of the hierarchy. This is the level when individuals achieve contentment in life by attaining what they have always aimed for. Later in his career, Maslow added another level on top of self-actualization, self-transcendence. This is defined as the need of every person to go beyond their boundaries. Let's deepen our insight about this matter by hearing this one out. What's, what's the force that's dragging us all together? So essentially, uh, the nature of being human is such, no matter where you are, what kind of achievements you have behind you, you're still longing to be something more. This something more, somebody may think more money, somebody may think more wealth, somebody may think more pleasure, more love, more knowledge, but everything that you accumulate in your life only makes the arrangements better but doesn't really enhance your life. But every human being is longing in some way to enhance their lives. Somebody thinks it will happen with prayer, somebody thinks it will happen with dope. All of them are aiming for the same thing, whether it works or not is a different matter. Mm. But the longing is in some way to enhance their life. No matter what you do, what you give them, human beings will long for something more. So there is something within every human being longing to be beyond boundaries. Whatever the present boundaries, we want to go beyond it. Or in… to put it in other words, there is something within you which does not like boundaries. That's why you try to smash them <laughs> There is something within a human being which doesn't like boundaries. So, this longing finds various sorts of expressions. People try through music, art, sport, business. All these efforts are fine, every effort is fine. The longing is fantastic. Through intoxication, through stimulation, every way people try somehow to break their boundaries. But the important thing is, can you stay beyond boundaries? Or do you breach it just for a moment and again come back to the same format? <laughs> right now, constantly you're breathing. It is happening in many different levels, but in a most fundamental way, you're breathing. If you close your mouth and hold your nose, you understand you cannot live within your boundary. <laughs> you have to breach the boundary every moment, otherwise you cannot exist. This is not just in the level of your respiration, every cell in the body, every atom in the body isn't some kind of transaction. If you stop it, you cease to exist. So your very existence is not within the boundaries, but within your psychological framework. See, this… all this mistake and this confusion has happened because creation gave us an individual experience. Though we are like a speck of dust in the universe, though we are a tiny speck, a micro speck in the universe, it gave us an individual experience. We are taking this individual experience rather too seriously and thinking it's real. No, it's just psychological. It's fantastic, it's the magnanimity of creation that it's given us an individual experience. This does not mean you are actually an individual, you are not. You cannot exist for one moment without everything else around you. 
all these arrangements you did not make, we messed it up, but <laughs> we did not make the, you know, arrangements of atmosphere, we did not make the arrangements of the planet functioning in a certain way, we did not make the arrangements of whatever comes out of this planet, nourishes us, keeps us well, this is not our making. So, this sense of individuality has been taken too seriously. Because of that, no matter where you are, in which dimension of life you are, you feel somewhere deep inside trapped. I don't collaborate with anybody <laughs> Whoever, either they're in front of me or they're not here with me, I make them a part of myself. And this is not my doing, this is the way creation is made. See. You may not be… you may not be able to stand the person who is sitting next to you, but what they exhale you're inhaling without any problem, isn't it? I'm saying essentially your existence is inclusive, only your mind is exclusive. I made my mind just the way my life is, so it's inclusive. So I don't think in terms of collaborating or confronting anybody, I'm just inclusive. I'm saying physiologically, we are not a great presence. Mm. Our significance is our intelligence and our ability to be conscious and inclusive. Essentially, the fundamental acti activity is to raise human consciousness. What is not you today could be you tomorrow, isn't it? Whatever soil yesterday, Today became food, tomorrow becomes your body, isn't it? So, consciousness means just this. If your physical body is dominant, you think, feel, act in a certain way because physical body is always about boundaries. So, uh, if your body is dominant, you think, feel and act in a certain way because you think through your body or your intelligence works for the boundaries of your body. So naturally, survival instinct will be the strongest, strongest dimension of who you are. When survival instinct is strongest, you always want to build a wall around yourself. When survival instinct is strong, you want to build a wall of self-preservation. The walls of self-preservation are also walls of self-imprisonment. What looks like protection today is imprisonment tomorrow. Has it happened to you or no? In many different ways. Hello? You build a wall thinking this is protection. After two days you realize this is a prison you built. Of course built by you so you cannot easily demolish it, it takes time because so much investment <laughs> has gone into it. If you identify with your psychological process, once again the boundaries may be little larger than your body but still it is a boundary because all your psychological process only happens with the identities that you have taken in. Maybe your race, your religion, your nationality, your ethnicity, something. You have taken on an identity. Your psychological framework works, works within that. This is my mind, that's your mind. Here and there we may overlap, but this is my mind, that's your mind. But when it comes to life, there is no such thing as my life and your life. Right now the problem with most human beings is their physiological and psychological process is too dominant for them to realize that the life that they are is of a different nature than the body and the psychological structures that they have built. This is like, let's say you and me blew a soap bubbles. Now I exclaim, that is my bubble, the big one is my bubble. It went poop. Then I don't say this is my air, that's your air. Life is just like this, this is a living cosmos. You captured some, I captured some. Now, the whole science of yoga is about breaching the boundaries of your psychological and physiological structure so that you imbibe more and more life. So after some time, the life that you are becomes more dominant than the body that you are, than the thought and emotion that you are. When your life becomes very significantly more than the psychological and physiological processes, if you sit here, you are a significant life, not necessarily because of what you do and do not do. You are just a significant life, simply by existence you are significant. Once it happens like this, uh, effortlessly you can function. 
every other creature always trying to set boundaries because their whole life is about survival. Once you become a human, survival is not the goal of your life. So human life is not about survival. Physical survival is not the end goal of who we are. We are longing to be something more. How much more do you think would settle you? Hello? How much more would settle you? If I make you the king of this planet or queen of this planet, would you settle? No? What do you want? Okay, the solar system. This is the nature of being human. Doesn't matter where the boundary is. The moment I see the boundary, I want to break it. So there is something within you longing to become boundless. If you do not find expression to this, do not matter what you have, you remain somehow unfulfilled. Fulfilling the desire for self-transcendence could be a challenging endeavor. According to a research study among elderly individuals, self-transcendence plays a vital role in mental health and well-being. This makes us wonder, does it really take old age before we realize this level of our need? This perspective could make us rethink the whole subject. Many like you and me have come and gone, not a trace of them anywhere. But only a few we remember. Suppose among the hundred of you who are leaving strong footprints with your boots, Suppose one of you flew across the border, just like that, not in an airplane, just like that. That one man you're going to remember forever, isn't it so? Hmm? Because he transcended limitations that are supposed to be human. That's what needs to happen to every life. In some way we must transcend the limitations of what we think are the limitations of being human. Psst, I am only human. This means they are always using the word human with reference to their limitations, not referring to the immensity of being human, always referring to the limitations of being human. Very rarely you saw anybody saying, I am human. Union means there is you and if you look at it in a rim limited perspective, there is you and the other, but if you look at it in the larger perspective, there is you and the universe. You versus the universe. See, this is where the border is, not there. This is where the border is, me and the rest of the universe. Here there is a border. If you cross this border successfully, then we say you are a yogi. You become one with everything. If you do not cross this border, you will have to always guard it, which you know is very odorous. So when you realize this and you consciously cross the border, then you are referred to as a yogi. If you are able to cross the border, suddenly you will not refer to the human being. The word human will not come out of your mouth anymore referring to the limitations. You will talk about human referring to the immensity of being human. Because once you cross the border, the whole world is yours. This need not be guarded. That border unfortunately we have to guard because uh, people still in this world have not matured enough to live without a border. Hmm? We have not matured to that place where nations can live without border. So, coming together is still far away. Lot of maturity needs to happen. Uh, I don't believe it will happen in our lifetime. So, you have to guard the border. <laughs> That's the only way. <laughs> If we acknowledge that every person is capable of rising above their limitations, then no one really knows the endless possibilities their potential can reach. At the same time, no one can also specifically point out how much striving must be exerted to reach this phase. Despite this not knowing, 
Just keep going and experience what difference this will make in your life. Learn more about overcoming life's endeavors by clicking on the video displayed above. Let us know which ideas strike you the most by leaving us a comment. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more meaningful videos like this. Thanks for watching.